In this presentation, we will continue on with part four of our example problem for a private college. The second example problem that we have worked through this one, we will be creating the statement of activities, the statement of activities being similar to an income statement in our private college. We're going to have our trial balance on the left. We're going to take that trial balance in order to construct the statement of activities on the right. The trial balance will, of course, be in order with the assets up top, then the liabilities in the orange, then what would be the equity sec section in a for-profit type of organization, the net assets section here in the light blue, then the area we are concentrating on here being the income statement in dark blue or what would be similar to income statement type of accounts, revenue and expense type of accounts down below in the dark blue. Within the trial balance, we see that the revenue type of accounts, the increases will actually be in the bracketed numbers. Those will be the credits. The debits or the expense type of numbers will have non-bracketed numbers. And then the net income or basically the net income type number, all the credits minus the debits in the dark blue items, what would be kind of income statement items are down below here represented in the change in the temporary accounts. So in essence, if we find a home for all of these accounts up top in the uh what would be the income statement or the statement of activities section you would think we would get to the bottom line here of the four million one sixty one three hundred and eighty and yes we will see that number in the future as we construct the statement of activities now the statement of activities the thing that's a little bit different here from an income statement is that it will be broken out to those items with donor restrictions those without donor restrictions and the total so we have a bit more detail in the columns we don't have multiple columns in the trial balance you'll note that how did we have to reflect those items we reflected them here in the names so we had things like contributions with donor restrictions contributions without donor restrictions and when we transfer them to this side then we're not going to put the whole thing without and with donor restrictions we're simply going to say contributions and then allocate it to the proper column in terms of how much is going to be restricted or not with regards to the category of say contributions keeping that in mind let's see what we have here we're going to say that we have the revenue and gains starting in a typical start place where we would in an income statement type of account or a statement like the statement of activities with revenue then we have the tuition and fees we're going to be recording it net so the tuition and fees net means we're going to be taking this credit balance of the five six three one four three zero minus the one three four five hundred that gives us the uh, five million four ninety six nine thirty so that's all going to be without restriction. Therefore, the total will be the same. Then we have the contributions. Now we have a lot of contributions down here, down below. The only one without restrictions is this first item. So these three, these items that have the restrictions, maybe there's more than three, there's, there's uh, four of them. We're going to add together in the column with restrictions. So that would be the uh, 579 200 plus the 738 400 plus the 1941 200 plus the 613 400 and that's going to be the 3 million 872 200 that's going to go into the amount with restrictions if we add those two up then of course we're going to get to the total amount of the 5 million 780 200 then we're going to have the auxiliary and that's going to be this item so we're looking at the income first. So that's going to be the 110,770, all of it without restrictions. Therefore, the total equal to the items without restrictions. Then we have the unrealized uh, gain on investment. So we have two categorizations down here, down below, one without restrictions, one with. Here's the item without restriction and with. Notice the shortening of the names. We're not picking up the total name. We're just simply calling it unrealized gain on investment column with donor restrictions unrealized gain on investment column uh without donor restrictions. so we, <laughs> without and with donor restrictions so just note that as we construct these two that adds up to the 13 140 and then we have the net assets released from restriction that of course is going to be these two items this is the kind of different thing uh than you would see in a for-profit type of organization is this allocation between with and without restrictions these two accounts are always increasing the item with restriction without restrictions these are always increasing the item without restrictions because the purpose of these accounts is to take something that was previously restricted in some format and unrestrict it therefore we're always going to have a positive number here however that positive number correlates to 
is from this uh, credit balance. So this credit balance, which is increasing this number in the credit direction, is the positive number on the statement of activities. This debit balance, which is the one with restrictions over here, is going to be a negative number on the uh, with donor restrictions, on the statement of activities with donor restrictions. So keep the debits and credits uh, straight and the increases and decreases straight in the statement of activities and that'll be good now we see that the ending balance of course will net out to zero because one will be going up one will be going down you could think of this kind of like an intercompany transaction or a or a fund type of transaction where one is going up the other is down there's no effect in the net total then of course if we add these up we will get let's add up the first column first we got the five four nine six nine three zero plus the one nine oh eight zero 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 plus the one one zero seven seven zero plus seven seven oh oh plus the five that's not a five five three zero 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 that's going to give us the eight million fifty three four hundred these add up to here of course and then the total we could see we can add up both ways, right? We can add up vertically. We could say the five four nine six nine three zero plus the five seven eight zero two zero zero plus the one. That's not a one. One one zero seven seven zero plus the one three one seven zero oh, is going to add up to the eleven four zero oh, one forty. And of course, we should be able to add them up this way as well at the eight zero oh, five three four hundred plus the three three four seven six four zero should also add up to the eleven four zero oh, one forty. Next, we're going to have the expenses and losses. Expenses and losses for the educational and general expenses. Grouping it by education and general, we're going to pick up the instruction expense. So the instruction expense is going to be here. These are all going to be without donor restrictions. So we can just go straight down and pick these up. We've got the academic uh, support expense. We've got the student, let's see, the student uh, service expense. We've got the institutional support support expense, so institutional support. And then if we were to add them up, they add up to the 709450. So we're just adding this these numbers now. There's nothing in the width restriction column. Therefore, we have the same total column as well. Then we're going to say down below, we have the auxiliary enterprise expense. We're pulling over the auxiliary enterprise expense separately because they're not part of the normal operations as we think of the school and therefore we will put them out and break them out down below here adding up them we have the total expenses and losses is going to be this amount the education uh, the total education in general plus the the auxiliary and that's going to be the same for the total adds up to the total expense and losses here and then we can get to the net change in uh, to the total change in net assets that will be the revenue the total revenue and gains minus the total expenses and losses so we're going to take these numbers subtract them out to get down to here and then of course we should be able to add across this way as well if we were to take the uh, 8137 uh, let's see if we were to take the 813740 plus 3347640 we're going to get the 4,161,380 now this is kind of like the bottom line number. You would think of this as similar to net income. You'll see that we get to this 4,161,380 as we see down here. So this subtotal works for everything as a total. Doesn't help us to break out between the two amounts of the without and with restriction, but it still gives us that check number for the total amount. This is the, the total change in net assets like net income, which means that basically this net assets, once we close out to the net assets will be the change of this amount and uh, so that's going to be similar to net income then we're going to break this out or tie it out to what would be on the balance sheet so remember there's nothing that's else that's going to be in the net asset accounts uh, here because there's no investments or anything posted to it therefore we could just tie out then to the ending basically what would be equity or net asset accounts in this case we do that by taking the total uh, asset beginning of the year these are the beginning of the year balances. They're the beginning of the year balances because no activity has been recorded to them for the entire year. Nothing will be until we close out uh, the temporary accounts to them. So therefore, if we take those beginning balances, the 5,600,000 and the 7,678 recorded here and add our change, kind of like our net income number to that, 
So here's our change in the total assets. Here's the beginning balances. We get to our ending number. So here's the change, the beginning and the ending number. We can see that activity. These, these amounts then we would see on what would be similar to the balance sheet statement.